stuff as we continue this conversation. I wanted to get started quicker than not because I know that I will monopolize all of her time and I know that you all have questions. Um, there's a lot packed into the pages of this book. Mm -hmm. And if you have not had an opportunity to read it, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I am an avid reader like that, so I'll just give you enough that you're going to want to read some more of it. Um, but I put my questions together in three sections. Um, so first, my insights of you and just, you know, if I got it right, if I got it wrong. Um, your politics and your activism and then um, what I call pearls pearls mm -hmm. so if you are on any type of social media hashtag pearls pearls we're going to gather those and put those on the website but there were a lot of those moments that I had to underline and highlight oh, well, and then you. call people and tweet them out so yeah um, so the first thing that I found very interesting about the book is that you're a movie buff what got you into film and cinema and your, your love for it? Um, it's interesting because my uh, father was a, uh, a very busy man and he was a civil rights activist. He was very good with groups of people. He was a great speaker, a charismatic minister, um, and could move great groups of people. He was less comfortable with one-on-one -on -one, um, mm -hmm. relationships. I got some amens on that. <laughs> <laughs> but my parents um, divorced amicably um, when I was about six years old, but um, we never moved off of the west side of Detroit, so I saw my father all the time, and we, you know, my mother and my father and my stepfather were all very close, so that that was fine. But one of the ways that my father um, was able to communicate with me um, in a way that was very satisfying to both of us was he loved movies. He had wanted to be a film director and actually went to film school in um, Los Angeles before I was born and wanted very much to direct films, but that was not really what he was called to do. Um, but he loved film all his life. And ever since I was maybe eight years old, somewhere around there, but very young, before um, high school, before even junior high school, I used to spend weekends with my dad. And what we would do, because this was before Netflix and all of that, <laughs> but there were always some good movies on TV. So I'd be a little kid watching on the waterfront with my dad, mm -hmm. and he would be talking about what that meant and what unions were and why they were important and what the role of the crusading priest was and who was the bad guy and who was the good guy and who were these gangsters. And I'm like eight years old saying, wow. wow. <laughs> Zapata. We watched like really serious movies and the thing about my dad was he never talked to me like I was you know six seven eight ten oh, twelve. Okay. He always talked to me the way he would be talking to an adult so that one of the ways that we were able to have those conversations would be through watching these films because I would say gotcha. what did that mean right. you know what just happened and he was able to um, you know to communicate with me in that way so I began to love film and when I moved to Atlanta when he would come here before the shrine opened right up the street mm -hmm. whenever he would come here and even after the shrine opened we would go out to dinner and go to the movies we went to see the Godfather wow. we went we went to see everything oh, wow. so that it was really a way of, of being close to my dad and um, has continued to be a way when I see a movie I always feel like wow my father would have loved this gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. so that started it and I believe um, just even the dialogue that you have with your father probably helped <coughs> as you became a writer oh uh, absolutely because you studied it sounds like he kind of broke everything down for you right. so you could understand the elements that were happening on screen and transferring that to writing. And one of the one of the things that he used to do um, was to not only with movies but about books he was reading. He would continue that kind of dialogue with me. Oh, okay. And I remember um, I would stay at his house on the weekends so that Saturday night he was a, a, a not a pastor who wrote you know like at a measured pace all throughout the week. He wrote that sermon on sa Saturday night. Okay. So that he would be you know at in the moment of whatever it was and he'd be writing. And one um, Saturday, he had been reading The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. Now, when you're like a 12-year-old kid, you're not reading The Wretched of the Earth about you know, worldwide struggle, revolution, and all that. And so I asked my dad if he wanted to watch a movie. I was getting ready to watch a movie in the back. And he said, no, because I really am trying to figure out how I can translate this book. Okay. So I said, wow. you know, what do you mean? <laughs> and he meant translated from the level that it was written, which was very dense in a good way, but you had to really have 
kind of persistence in the vocabulary and the understanding to bring to that book. And what he was trying to do, because he thought the information in the book was so important, mm -hmm. was to figure out a way to talk in a sermon on Sunday morning about everything that was in that book, how it related to us on the west side of Detroit, and how it related to Jesus and the Bible. So oh, that wow. all of that was going on, and he's talking to me, and I'm saying, he thinks I understand <laughs> what he's talking about. <laughs> talking to me so I, I would pick up a little more each time a little more each time yeah and that was that was actually certainly a help to me as a writer because it it really made me know how important it is to be able to write for people I love Toni Morrison but she frustrates me sometimes no. I, I don't understand you gotta work and she wants you to have to work I mean yeah. she'll tell you proud to work hard. I don't want y'all to have to work hard on what does this word Thank mean. You. I want y'all to have to think about things and all that, but it's like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to read uh, Paradise, which is several books ago for her. And I got to the last couple <coughs> pages and I said, okay, Pearl, what is happening in this book? And I was like, you got me. I, I never finished it because it just was, it was making me work so hard and I just didn't get it. Right. But I understood that that was the way that some people wrote, but I'm more of the school my father was, which okay. is I love lots of information. I know that I'm privileged to have access to a lot of information, mm -hmm. and I want to be able to tell it to the widest number of people that I can, so they can use it. Yes. You know, they, so that they don't have to have the dictionary on one side, and <laughs> Google on the other. Right. Side. <laughs> right. And the aspirin, because you have to learn. Oh, no, 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 no. Focus. Focus. Oh. You have to be focused. That's too much.